Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. As a preacher, I love those Sundays when I can speak about one simple practice that can change the whole way a person experiences life. One simple practice that opens a person's heart to the freedom and the joy that God really desires for all of us. And this practice is not taught in prayers or held up highly in our society, but it is an invitation. The scriptures give us an invitation to this practice that leads us to a different kind of life. And that invitation is to praise. Praise is the practice of shifting your attention away from yourself to that which is eternal. We long to receive praise, of course, but true freedom comes when we learn to give praise. Now, you and I already know how to do this in some settings. Think about a large arena filled with people cheering for a sports team. Think of the energy that you get there. Think of that moment when you're totally focused on what's happening on the court, and when something great happens, you jump up with joy, high-fiving, hugging people next to you, screaming, yelling. This past week, I spent 15 minutes looking at a YouTube of all of Steph Curry's greatest basketball moments. And in every one, there was that arena of people cheering, yelling. I was standing up and cheering and yelling. It was so beautiful and amazing to watch his skill. It doesn't have to just be sporting events, right? You can get that same feeling amidst a group of people uh, at a concert or even in an art gallery where you see a particular piece that just moves your heart and your soul. Of course, in an art gallery, it's not appropriate to stand up and yell. But it's the same movement of heart and soul. So if we know these moments of joy, why do we have so few of them? Suffering, of course. Life can be hard. There's suffering in our lives, things that are painful. There are wounds. Life can just be difficult. It can just be hard work. That's the situation that we find in one of today's scriptures. In the passage from Isaiah, Isaiah is speaking to the Israelite people after they've been exiled from the land. Their homes have been burned to the ground. Their city has been destroyed. They've been gathered up and carted away to a land that's far away from their home where they don't know the language. They don't know how they're going to get along. Their very identity, their very way of life and being has been torn away from them. And then into this reality comes a word. And that word jolts them out of their stupor. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is the one who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and the rulers of earth 
to nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their root stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. The word draws the Israelites from their immediate troubles to the one who holds everything in love. And when they do, they free themselves from the oppression of self-pity in remembering the awesomeness of the Holy One they free themselves from fear and despair. Praise can be the result of seeing and, and knowing such awe and wonder. But we can also nurture that experience of this kind of self-forgetfulness. In everyday life, we can make it a part of our routine and recognize that life is not routine at all, but a miracle in every moment. So how can praise be a part of life? I've already noted the cheering that happens in the midst of a large event. That kind of praise happens when we gather for worship all together. And what's the first thing we do whenever we gather for worship? We praise God. Glory to God in the highest. And so that kind of being together and turning our gaze outward together can help us get caught up in God's praise. But there are other ways as well. This afternoon, many of us will go to a church of a different kind. We'll assemble, assemble virtually, I hope, to keep yourself safe for the spectacle of the Super Bowl. And when someone makes a touchdown, and someone will make a touchdown because these are two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. You see how I did a little praise there in the middle? But when someone makes a touchdown, what'll happen? Well, first they'll run to that big screen and receive a little praise. But a lot of them, a lot of them will make it just a little symbol, just a little movement of praise. You'll see it if you watch. I wonder if we have a little movement of praise that we make, not just in victory, because the other moment, maybe they won't show it on TV, is when all the players sit in a circle in the center of the field and they stop for a moment of praise and thanksgiving together, whether they won or whether they came up short. This week I've been taking my clue on praise from the psalmist by taking a daily noticing walk. I have to choose what I think about on my walk. It's really easy for me to fall into ruminating about the concerns of my day or, or to listen to that self-critical voice that, when it's quiet, always wants to sneak in. But I can choose. I can choose to turn from that to a different kind of noticing. I notice the fragrance and the colors and the sounds of creatures. The psalmist says, God covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. The Holy One makes grass grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve humankind. The Almighty provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. I choose to notice in wonder and awe the beauty of God's creation. And I give praise silently in my heart that I am a small part, but a part nonetheless, of something so grand and wonderful as God's creation. 
I lose myself in wonder to the one who gives us all this. Or sometimes I sing, not out loud, but quietly letting the words and the tune rise up out of the center of my being, up through my lips. This week I've learned a new song. You'll get to hear it right after the sermon. It's called Blessed Be. It's the kind of song that will rise up through my lips, and I'm sure will this week. Blessed be, it starts. Or there's the hymn at the end of the service today. Peace be for us, peace with us, peace under our feet. Or it's even just speaking, speaking a psalm like the one from today's service. To practice praise can transform a moment or a day or a lifetime. It's like the words of the old hymn. My life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear that real though far off hymn that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear its music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? And in that kind of praise, we can know the promise of Isaiah to those people so downtrodden and in despair. The promise that no matter what the circumstances of your life are, that life can reign. In praise, we can know that God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength and mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Blessed be.